Hello mate, welcome back. In this video we're going to look at how to put items into our scene so that we can do some rendering. So looking at what we want to put into our scene, we can start off with something really simple. So let's just put some primitive in the scene. In order to create primitives, what we need to do is come up to the top toolbar here. And on this button that looks like three shapes smushed together, we click on that and then we get an option here to create a new primitive. Now if we click on this type, we get a drop down of all different types of primitive shapes here. And when we click on whichever shape we want, you'll notice that the options at the bottom change. This is a contextual menu. The other thing that we can change is the primary axis. Now, if you're creating a cube, primary axis doesn't make any difference whatsoever because a cube is identical on all four sides. Hence the, hence the name cube. So let's look at what happens if we just go with cylinder and we consider X positive, we'll just leave the rest of the settings as they are for now. Click on OK and you can see that the cylinder has appeared in the scene on its side. So let's move this over way over there by using our little move tool. We've got the move tool selected here as you can see in the top toolbar. And we're going to create another cylinder. Everything is going to stay the same except this time we're going to change to Y positive. And we click on that and you'll notice that it's created it pacing the other way. Now. The reason that we're doing that is because when we create a new primitive, what we're saying is primary axis, i.e. what is up. Up is Y positive in this case, X positive in this case, and if we were to create one that was Z positive and we hit accept, you can see that we've got all three directions now for our shape. And as you can see here on the scene tab in the right hand side, we've got all three shapes there and we can choose and select them as we so wish. And what you'll see is these values in the parameters tab changing when I click on each different shape. And that is because these three different shapes, they all have Y translate zero, as you can see if I select them all, but they've all got different X and Z positions. If we wanted to move this one around using this, we can simply drag that forwards and backwards like that. And as you can see, it moves. We can input the value. So if we say minus 150 in there, you can see that moves or we can simply use the nudge buttons here which will move it one at a time which I think you'll agree is a pretty damn slow way of doing it but it's useful if you're trying to move something with considerable precision so that's how we create primitives and as I said before if you change the primitive that you're creating you get different options so if we go to plane you can see that all we get is a size in meters and the number of divisions and what that means is how many times the shape has been divided, i.e. how many vertices they're going to be along each edge and how many lines there are going to be on each face. So if I was to hit one here, I'm gonna quickly change into wire texture shaded. And as you can see, the plane has no divisions in it whatsoever. If, however, I were to create another one and this time I was to say, I want three divisions, I hit accept you can see that it's now created a plane with three divisions on each plane, which is really helpful. So let's get rid of these load of junk. We don't need those in our scene. So there's two other ways we can add content into our scene. There is using the content library, which allows us to, if I expand this, you can see I've got a considerable number of folders here and we can expand these menus a little bit further and we can say, what we actually want so we've got dress character there if I were to double click on that from my content library that's going to take a minute to load into the scene and then that will appear in our scene and as you can see now we've got the character loaded into the scene if I just quickly jump over to texture shaded mode I can get rid of the wireframe and you can see the character there in all her glory now anytime you load a character into the scene assuming that you've saved the character in the a pose and it's a custom character they'll appear in the a pose if you've saved them in any other pose, then it will appear in the pose that you've saved them in. Most default characters that you've bought from the store will load into the scene either like this, if they're a Genesis 8 or 8.1, or their arms will be in a T pose, which means straight out either side, if it's a older model. So that's one useful way of being able to tell the difference quickly between a Genesis 8 or a Genesis 3 or a Genesis 2 is the pose that they will appear in when they load into the scene. Now, if you notice, I'll click on the character in the scene and then a whole bunch of, of uh, properties and parameters will open up for us, same as before. But characters generally have a whole bunch more as well. And that is because you can also adjust 
the properties or the parameters of their clothing and there's also a lot of posing and morphing options in there as well so there is one way of loading stuff into the scene and if we come back to our content library you can see that that basically works like a file explorer you can go through your content library and just load anything into the scene that you so choose which is a useful way of doing it but it's certainly not the quickest way of doing it now the quickest way of doing it is to use what we call smart content so if we go ahead and click on the smart content tab what you can see here is a number of categories on the left hand side which allow us to put items in the scene and this is a contextual menu so if i were to select the character in the scene what you'll see is that the options here do change slightly because there are certain things that just are not relevant for this character so if we deselect it again you can see a bunch of other stuff appears again so if we wanted to go in and put another character in if we expand figures we can see that there's a number of options in there and we can increase we can expand people and then if we were to click on female it continues and then there's real world and then as you can see there there are a number of options so if we were just to select female then you can see all of the content from our content library will eventually load and then if we double click on one of these i'm going to do that now double click you can see that it's going to load that into the scene as well again it'll take a long time if you've got a big content library but uh, depending on what you've got will depend on how much time it takes to load essentially so now as you can see i've got both characters loaded into the scene i've quickly changed over to smooth shaded simply because this character is unfortunately in the nip which means that if i don't put it to smooth shaded you'll get all kinds of boobage on the screen which no one wants to see honestly that's definitely the case and we can move them around same as before using our move tool we can even scale them in this scene if we want to we can just increase and decrease the size of the character using that by clicking on the little cube there we can rotate them just by using this and you'll notice that these characters or as i rotate them they're actually rotating around an invisible spot in between their feet and that is what we call their base node it's basically where the entirety of the character is centered upon and if we look at the character explorer we go into the scene tab here we can go in and as you can see if i select the hip bone which is the sort of root on top of the root that brings us up to up here which is where the hip bone is and then we can rotate the character around the middle so it's something to remember when you're moving characters around make sure that you've got them selected on what you need them to be centered on before you jump to start using things like the rotate tool because it can look really odd if your character's off kilter slightly alternatively if you're worried about your character being in the wrong position we can center our view like this and come back here Let's see if I click on our character here in the scene tab minimize that and if we click on this little person icon next to the widget we can go to restore figure pose and then after a few moments of thinking the pose will revert back to default and the position will revert as well after a considerable wait in some cases the character will revert back to its default pose at zero zero just like you can see in here now full disclosure if you have got a lot of items in your content library it can take upwards of 10 minutes to reset the pose in most cases it's better to either use the undo button in the edit menu if you want to revert back to where you were before or better still just close down dash studio and reload honestly save yourself a lot of time pain and heartache and wondering if your computer is broken dash studio is really not the best optimized software in the world and it is a horrendous waiting game even for something as simple as reverting the character back to its default pose either way i hope you found that useful guys let me know what you think in the comments below i will of course always read and try to respond if i have time either way i'll see you very soon and until then you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.